These are the pillars at Arcane that we, uh, we have those mantras that we put on walls. Some of them uh, were made during uh, Dishonored because, of course, there are common values between the games. They essentially represent values that we admire and want to put into the game. Nobody works in a vacuum, you know, at, at some level everyone is indebted to the other games that have come before them and that are going on around them uh, as examples of good practices. One of the things we talk about a lot is say yes to the player. The little subtitle there is, if it occurs to players and sounds like fun, let them do it. And so we have a screenshot of, I think that's just cause, with somebody walking on top of an airplane, because that's, that's a game that really says yes to the player quite a bit. So these ones are, like, also work for Dishonored, work for us, here on Prey, but there are some that are specific to Prey. Yeah, uh, so... Ecology, the, actually. Yep. Yeah, so over here we have dynamic hazards, which is like, hey, environmental changes, force players and enemies to adapt. Uh, and so we have a screenshot of uh, FTL, with another really amazing game that has uh, gameplay like that. And by the way, this is the area where we do our scrums. What's cool is that every every employee somehow during the day has an opportunity to see those those uh, yep. mantras. There's a good example of one. Another one unique to Prey is uh, Space Dungeon. Space Dungeon, yeah. I think that's is that System Shock One? Is that the space station? If it goes to level design, usually we are we are going to focus on intentionality, making sure that players always know why they're doing what they're doing, as opposed to follow an arrow or a drunk walk. It's probably obvious as you look at these that some of them uh, overlap and are interconnected, right? So like, you can't have intentionality if you don't also have clarity, right? Like, I need to know what the purpose of this thing is or what this room is in order for me to make a plan about what I want to do. That's my favorite. <laughs> you know, it's funny because it's also one in general at Bethesda with Bethesda games and we have the same, we have exactly the same. The, the subtitle says, you just fall to your death anyway. There's some very, very valid reasons such as we are a game where we don't like to put players in modes. We like the player to be able to always have his weapon in the hands, for example, or always be able to uh, cast a power or something, right? And so as soon as you go on a, on a ladder, then suddenly you're in a mini mode. You're, you know, your hands are there and like you cannot do everything, you try to turn your head but you're stuck. But the other reason is that they're hard to make. They, you, know, it's, you never really stick the right way, etc. The other reason is a lot of people fall from ladders. You're working on a game where like it's statistically people are dying the most for oh, yeah. falling from ladders. I think it's one of the Deus Ex games. A true question is in architecture, how many ladders have you climbed in the past 10 years, you know, not that many. So we do we do environments without letters. I mean, I think we share a lot in common with the Fallout Skyrim team. In fact, we have a screenshot there on improvisation. That comes from Skyrim, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good example of like, they could have uh, fixed that. Yeah. It's like one of those things of like saying yes to the player, improvised this interesting thing and it worked and they feel like they're getting away with something, you know, yeah. they're exploiting the game systems. We're basically trying to remember what is super important to us as far as like when we do a game or, or in either game what it is that we like so much. And uh, here you see things like environmental storytelling, the object density, meaning like what is the ratio of clutter versus objects that you can use. All these things matter to us a lot. Break the patterns. Yeah, a good example of that would be like the, the Lady Boyle mission in Dishonored. Right? We're making a game about a supernatural assassin and every mission you're being sent to kill someone. So like, guys, let's break the pattern. This third or fourth mission instead of infiltrating a space and kill murdering people, you're actually invited to a party where people don't know who you are. I think we make games for gamers. I do think though that we also make an effort to bring whatever it is that hardcore gamers like to the surface for more, more people. At the end of the day, it's not so much the complexity that matters in a game, it's the depth. So exactly. you, can, you can have yeah. the depth, but not the complexity. And, and I think hardcore games in most people's mind is, is complex and deep, but the complexity, nobody wants it. Not even the hardcore players, honestly. I think we've talked about nah, pretty much that's uh, it. most of our values anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can expose easily. <laughs>